Welcome to Tax Law GH and welcome to our third and probably final session on the key concepts of income tax in Ghana. Under this session, we'll focus mainly on exempt amounts. We've looked over the past two sessions at a number of concepts from who a person is, what will make someone resident or non-resident, amounts that are specifically to be included or excluded in determining income taxes, among several others. At this point, it is important to look at what is exempt from income tax. You remember from our previous sessions that we've looked at the concept of accessible income, we've looked at the concept of chargeable income, and we learned the concept of imposition of income tax. At what level is income tax imposed in Ghana? Having known all of that, it is now relevant to know what amounts are clearly exempt from income tax. This will be the final layer we need to put in our structure or in the foundation we are putting together to have a strong basis for understanding income taxes. So let's look at the exempt amounts in the law. You find almost all of these in section 7 of Act 896 as the Income Tax Act. Let's look at a number of these and then we can tell which of these amounts are exempt from income tax. The first one, obviously, is the salary allowances, facilities, pension and gratuity of the president in accordance with Article 68.5 of the 1992 Constitution. So the president of Ghana is exempt from income tax. It's important to remember that this exemption covers his income in the office of president. When he becomes an ex-president, he doesn't enjoy this benefit. So it covers the sitting president. It's important to remember this. The fact that you've been president before doesn't mean you enjoy perpetual exemption from income tax. And although not too relevant here, when we begin to do other taxes, you you learn probably in VAT that the president is relieved from VAT. When we go to customs duties, to some extent, it's relieved from customs duties. When we go to excise duty, we see a similar extension running through a majority of our laws. So remember that for income tax purposes, the president of the Republic of Ghana is exempt from income tax. The next exemption or the next amount that's exempt from income tax is the income of the government of Ghana itself or a local authority other than income from activities which are only indirectly connected with the government or status of local authority. So what this is trying to say is any income that the government of Ghana makes or a local authority of the government of Ghana makes is exempt from income tax unless that income amount is indirectly connected with the status of the government or the local authority. So we don't expect the government to be in a commercial venture for its own benefit. So if let's say there's a local authority in Ghana that is running business of a commercial nature that is not in the nature of that local authority. Let's say you're a local authority in charge of um, taking care of the environment and we hear you are, you've started renting out buses and um, things like that, making rental, any rental income, that income is not in your nature as a local authority and will not be, um, will not enjoy this exemption here. So take note, the government of Ghana and the local authorities exempt only to the extent that the income relates to their status as a government or a local authority. The next thing we need to be aware of is the income of a public corporation. So this is a corporation set up by the government to undertake different um, initiatives, right? So the income of the public corporation is exempt where they are not set up as a commercial venture. So you may be aware that the government sets up different commercial businesses under government ownership, right? So generally, public corporations are exempt from tax to the extent that the public corporation is not set up as a commercial venture and the income is from an activity that is directly connected with the status of that public corporation. So for a public corporation to enjoy the exemption, number one, they shouldn't be set up as a commercial venture. And number two, the activity should be directly connected with their status. What were they set up by law to do? Is that what they are doing? If yes, then they enjoy the exemption. The next thing is pension. Pensions are exempt from income tax. And the rationale is simple, right? 
you worked all your life, we taxed you all your life. When you are going home and you are tired, you are retiring, we want to give you a break. That's like um, the layman's understanding or rationale for why pensions are exempt from income tax. Just remember that pensions are generally exempt from income tax in Ghana. The next is probably related to the reason for a pension being exempt is a capital sum paid to a person as a compensation or a gratuity in relation to a personal injury suffered by that person or for the death of another person is exempt. Here we are saying we paid your capital sum to compensate you when you got injured or when someone related to you died, right? You can see the payment made to you was even made to you under conditions of stress, was made to you under unfavorable conditions. You were injured, we paid you. It's a way to use tax not as a tool to punish but as a tool to ensure that we have a fair and just society kind of so we exempt amounts paid to persons if it is paid to them because they were injured or because someone else died and we were making payments to them because of that death of another person remember this it's very important the next is the income of a non-resident person who operates a business of ships or aircraft where the Commissioner General is satisfied that an equivalent exemption is granted by the person's country of residence to persons who are Ghanaian residents. Let me take that again. What this means is if you have an operator of a ship, an operator of an airline or an aircraft, right? The only condition under which they will enjoy this exemption is if in their home country, so let's say the ship operator is from Germany. The only condition under which any income earned by this ship operator in Ghana will be exempt is if Ghanaian ships on the shores of Germany or on the waters or territorial zone of, of Germany enjoy this equivalent exemption. So you exempt me, I exempt you. So if Germany doesn't give us this exemption from income tax, then we will not give you the German operator on the waters of Ghana. That's the rationale here. The non-resident person operating a business of ships and aircraft in Ghana is only exempt to the extent that their country also exempts Ghanaian aircraft and ship businesses. Very simple. Then the next one is the income from cocoa of a cocoa farmer is also exempt from income tax. This is a way to obviously encourage cocoa farmers to increase their output and continue to put Ghana on the map, increase our um, export earnings and all of those other macroeconomic um, reasons. The next is the income of a person who receives instruction at an educational institution and that income comes from a scholarship, an exhibition, a bursary or a similar educational endowment. So if you are in school and you are receiving, you are under a scholarship scheme and as part of the scholarship you receive let's say a monthly bursary, a monthly stipend, right? The payment that comes to you is exempt from income tax. And the reason is quite logical, right? You're a student, you're studying, and already you've been given the scholarship because you are probably having financial hardships. So the law in its wisdom is not going to impose any extra burden on you by way of taxing that scholarship amount. So remember, if you are receiving instruction at an educational institution, and it's usually a scholarship um, or similar related endowment payments, then that payment is also exempt from tax in the hands of the recipient of the payment, that's a student in most cases. The next thing is, I'll call this paragraph the privileges, uh, paragraph or the privileges point. So persons who enjoy privileges, either under a certain diplomatic Im immunities act, under the UN and the specialized agencies of the UN under the AU, that's African Union, or ECOWAS and its agencies, any income these persons entitled to privileges receive will also be exempt from income tax. And it's a point here to encourage regional um, integration to encourage cross-border collaboration and all of these factors. So if, an, if a UN agency is in Ghana or a person who is entitled to a privilege under a certain UN provision or entitled to a certain privilege under the AU or ECOWAS, then we exempt 
these people from income tax, these diplomatic um, persons or the persons entitled to privileges. Very important to remember this. The next is the income of an individual to the extent that it's provided for in an agreement between the government of Ghana and a foreign government or a public international organization for the provision of technical services, take note of this, technical services to Ghana, where that individual is a non-resident person or an individual who is resident in Ghana only because of performing the service and that agreement has been ratified, ratified means approved, right? Has been ratified or approved or made legal by the parliament of Ghana in accordance with the constitution. What this means is if the government of Ghana enters into an agreement with someone, either a foreign country or a foreign international body for the provision of technical services to Ghana. So let's say Ghana wants to do an um, impact assessment of a certain policy and we get someone from say the German government or the World Bank to come and do this service for us. The income that person makes in Ghana is exempt from income tax with relation to the technical services on the condition that that person number one is a non-resident person. So we explained non-residents in our previous series of uh, this topic. So either the person is a non-resident person or the person is resident in Ghana, but only because they are performing the service. So let's say if the government of Ghana gives this contract to somebody who is already resident here, let's say the person lives here with his family. He's a German citizen. He's been in Ghana for the past two years. He's doing his own activities. Then he wins the contract to do this or provide this technical service to the government of Ghana. That income will not be exempt because that person was resident in Ghana before this contract came up. So we can say that person was not resident or is not resident solely because of performing the service. Remember that you must be non-resident or you are only resident because you are doing this service for the government of Ghana. That is when the income you earn from providing technical services will be exempt from income tax. Take notice, it's very, very crucial. And this agreement must be approved by parliament or ratified by parliament. Very crucial point here. The next is any cost of living allowance other than a training allowance, which is paid in place of a salary for services rendered abroad by members of Ghana's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and officers attached to the official Ghanaian diplomatic or consular missions abroad. So any cost of living allowance that we pay to people who are rendering service abroad for Ghana under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs under our diplomatic and consular missions abroad they are exempt take note it is their cost of living allowance excluding their training allowance take note it's the cost of living allowance that is exempt from income tax the next is income from a temporary employment of an individual with the government of ghana where number one that individual is not a citizen of ghana number two the income is expressly exempt under the employment contract and number three the income is paid out of the consolidated fund of ghana so what we are saying here is if someone is temporarily employed under or with the government of ghana their income from that temporary employment is exempt where number one they are not a citizen so let's say the government of ghana contracted them to come and do a quick project for them and then go back to their country so they are not a citizen of ghana in the first place number two that income is clearly in the employment contract exempt and we pay this money out of the consolidated fund the final um, point here is really important if you pay the money out of the consolidated fund and you tax that amount it's like a plus or minus so don't forget that all taxes we pay eventually will end up in the consolidated fund in one way or the other so it's like i pay you out of the fund i tax you and put the money back into the fund it doesn't really make sense so this is just to encourage um, once again collaboration right so the government wants to ensure that people who render services to the government will have an incentive to give up their best will have an incentive to come to ghana to do this duty don't forget also that this point does not cover citizens right so the first point is the individual is not a citizen of Ghana, so you it doesn't have anything to do with residence. This has a lot more to do with citizenship than tax residence. Taking notes is very important. 
The next is the income of an individual from employment in the public service of the government of the foreign country. Where number one, the individual is either a non-resident or is resident in the country only because of performing this employment or the individual does not exercise any other employment or carry on a business in Ghana. The next is the income is payable from the public funds of that foreign country and the income is subject to tax in that foreign country. So here we are saying an individual is employed in the public service of a foreign country. That individual is either non-resident or is resident in the country only because of performing this employment. That individual does not exercise any other employment or carry on any other business in Ghana. The income is payable from the foreign funds of the foreign country. That's wherever they are from, their home country. And that person is paying tax on that income in their country. We are saying, you know what, let's not go through the hassle of taxing them and they going back and taking a tax credit or a tax deduction, whichever system they have. We are just exempting you straight away because of this provision we have here. So take note, this is one thing you need to also be aware of. The next is the income of a state-owned or state-sponsored educational institution. This provision has uh, met with a lot of criticism in the media. So here I am saying that any state-owned or state-sponsored school is exempt from income tax. There was a lot of um, noise around this. Until recently, um, private universities got a similar exemption, but they had um, a condition attached. They had to plow back all profits they made back into the business on, before they enjoyed the exemption. What it means is a state-owned or a state-sponsored, that is schools like University of Ghana, KNUSC, UCC, all these governments and unis, enjoy income tax exemption. They don't pay income tax on their income. The private schools like, uh, which ones, Ashesi, the other private schools in Ghana, they will only enjoy the income tax exemption to the extent that whatever income they make, as a, uh, whatever profits they make as a university, they plow everything back into the university. They put everything back into the university. This means no distribution of dividends, no payouts to investors, just put all your money back into the business to also enjoy the exemption. The next exemption is for the income of an institution or a trust of a public character that is established by an enactment or a law solely for the purpose of conducting scientific research. So an example that will come to mind personally here will be um, CSIR, right? Um, CSIR does a lot of research, scientific and industrial research in Ghana. So any income made by CSIR will ordinarily be exempt from income tax because the government wants to promote research into science and all of these um, other areas. Not too sure, but I'm also expecting the Noguchi Institute of Medical Research to also enjoy a similar exemption because they should, I expect, be enacted or be under, under an enactment that makes them exempt that ensures or provides that they are established to conduct scientific research. The next thing which will probably interest you watching is interest paid to an individual, that's you, by a resident financial institution or interest paid to you, an individual, on bonds issued by the government of Ghana. So if you hold a savings account or a current account or a fixed deposit account with any financial institution in Ghana, they must be residents, right? That interest you earn on your account or your deposit with them that a bank pays you is exempt from income tax. If not for this exemption, ordinarily, interest should be subject to an 8% withholding tax rate. What this means is, because the exemption is for individuals, take note here that the law says interest paid to an individual. So it means if interest is paid to a company, they don't enjoy this exemption. So if let's say GM, which company should I? Let's say Coca Cola Ghana Limited has a fixed deposit account with Ecobank. Ecobank will pay Coca Cola 
interest on that fixed deposit because coca-cola is not an individual they are not exempt from that interest tax so echo bank will withhold tax at eight percent but let's replace coca-cola with you you watching here if you have an account with echo bank a fixed deposit account and echo bank pays you interest you've earned on your fixed deposit because you're an individual and because echo bank is a resident financial institution echo bank will not tax you or will not withhold any amount when they are paying you the interest. The same exemption applies to interest that you earn on bonds that the government of Ghana issues to you. Very important. The next is any interest or dividend that is paid to you or credited to you if you are a holder or a member of an investment in an approved unit trust scheme or mutual fund. So a number of examples come up here. You've probably heard of Data Bank, M Fund, B Fund, and all of those several investment schemes uh, echo bank has edc investment um Stambik bank recently rebranded re re their um stanley to Stambik investment management services so they also have their own mutual funds um, all of these mutual funds that are approved take note they must be approved by the sec of ghana so if you make any interest on these non-approved ones example recently men's gold you will not enjoy this exemption because by all indications men's gold was not licensed men's gold was not approved so they won't benefit from this exemption so for the approved mutual funds the approved unit trust schemes like i mentioned if you make any money on your investment if you make any return on your investment this will be exempt from income tax that is why i'm sure if you have an account with any of these mutual fund companies you don't remember them withholding tax when they were paying you it's because your returns are exempt from tax this is to encourage people to invest invest for the long term really the next is interest paid to a non-resident person on bonds issued by the government of Ghana. and take note here if you are using the original version of the income tax act you will not you not see this here i mean the initial act that has not been amended this was passed by an amendment act later so be careful and um, if you're using a textbook that was published before this act was passed or if you are reading from section 7 of the original act you you see this here right so interest paid to a non-resident person on bonds issued by the government of ghana and you can see here the focus on non-resident persons the government wants to encourage non-residents to buy our bonds it's a simple strategic move here if i tell a foreigner that you know what come and invest in ghana any interest you make on government bonds in ghana i don't even tax you don't you think that's an incentive because not too many territories have this ex um, tax exemption on bonds so this is a way for the government to attract non-residents to buy government of ghana bonds right it's very important to remember this point the next is gains that you make from the realization of bonds issued by the government of ghana by that same non-resident person so you know we spoke about interest the person earns now this is gains if you've done some finance before for an instrument for a financial instrument typically there are two cash flow or cash flow streams you can make a return which is your periodic um, return either it's interest or dividend then at the end it's possible to make something called capital gains if you bought the instrument at 100 100 100 um, dollars and it's appreciated to $200, you have made a capital gain of an extra 100, right? So we are saying gains anybody makes from realizing bonds issued by government of Ghana, it still goes to the non-residents, they are exempt from income tax. Then gains from the realization of securities traded on the Ghana Stock Exchange up to 31st of December, 2021, will also be exempt from income tax. At the, at the, at the time of recording today, which is 5th of January, 2021, we still have roughly 12 months to um, see this exemption end. It is my firm expectation that the government will again amend this um, portion of Section 7 to further extend this exemption. But as we stand, to, as I speak today, the, the position of the law is that up to the end of 31st December, 2021, any securities you trade on the Ghana Stock Exchange and any gain you make from selling your shares should be exempt 
from income tax take note it is not the dividend that is exempt the dividend you 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 earn on any ghana stock exchange share will still be liable to an eight percent final withholding tax this is just a gain when you bought the share for 10 cd the share um, has now appreciated to say 50 cds that gain you make is what we are exempting up to 2021 there have been a number of amendments to keep extending these dates from prior laws if, you, if you've been following you realize that they keep extending the date so i'm hoping we, are, we, are, we again push this from 2021 or what i think is uh, the government should just once and for all take up the take out the date and then say gains from realizing securities are exempt right? but what i'm expecting also is there is a policy objective or policy reasoning behind this there are some who say that the government is doing this to ensure that the ghana stock exchange becomes stronger becomes more efficient becomes more established and then they take away this exemption so we start paying tax on gains they are doing this to encourage people to invest until we have a stronger system a stronger financial system more stable then we take away the exemption so let's see how this year goes when the government reads the budget and if there's any change obviously we will notify you by another video the next exemption is the income of an approved unit trust scheme or mutual fund remember i told you a few minutes ago a few seconds ago that any return you make from an approved unit trust scheme or mutual fund is exempt now this exemption is for the mutual funds themselves the unit trust schemes themselves right if once again if you are using the original income tax act you won't see any of these new changes here these are very new and if you've not been following the amendments to the to the law you'll probably not have this in your textbook which might be dated or um, if you're using the original version of the act so remember that there's an amendment that have, has added this to the list of exemptions if you have let's say an account with ecobank edc which is a mutual fund and ecobank edc after making all their payments to their um, shareholders and unit holders any income they have at the end of the period is exempt from tax it's a very recent addition so the mutual fund is also enjoying exemption from income tax then you the recipients or the beneficiaries also enjoying exemption from income tax this is all to ensure that people invest the financial system is more stabilized and to encourage investments generally the next one is the income of an approved real estate investment trust which is an area or a rate as some people call it um, i know we have there's just one rate i know of in ghana maybe a number so these are trusts or kind of investment instruments that track the growth of the real estate industry so let's say you want to invest in the real estate industry but you don't want to invest directly in real estate by buying land buying buildings you can buy a financial instrument that kind of tracks the performance of the real estate market right so a rate we are saying the income of that rate is exempt from income tax this is also to probably encourage um, rates or more companies to set up rates to encourage or open up the market in ghana really right so these are the exempt amounts in section 7 of act 896 we've come this far let's take some concept checkers very crucial so the first question we have here question one the requirement is is tyson right or wrong explain your answer is tyson right or wrong explain your answer so question one tyson fury is tax resident in ghana he has an interest-bearing savings account with NatWest Bank in London. NatWest withheld tax when they were paying Tyson his interest end. Tyson claims this amount is exempt from tax, so NatWest should not have withheld any tax. Is Tyson right or wrong? Explain your answer. You can press the pause button on your screen and have a think through it and let me know what you think. Is Tyson right or wrong? Okay, let's, let, let's try that. So Tyson is wrong, and I'll tell you why. Tyson is wrong because Tyson claims the bank should not have withheld tax. Remember, the exemption for interest is for interest paid to an individual by a resident financial institution. We've mentioned that NatWest Bank is in London, and because of that, 
NatWest Bank would be a non-resident financial institution. So they don't get to enjoy this exemption. So Tyson is wrong. NatWest was right when they withheld when we were paying him because there's no exemption that says they should not withhold. And in any way, in any case, it's a UK bank making payments to a Ghanaian resident person. So they will have to comply with the laws of the UK. And so Tyson is wrong in this instance. The next one is, is Israel's claim valid? explain your answer so in this question i say israel adesanya is a cocoa farmer in ghana who recently won national best farmer at the regional level israel runs a pharmacy in this area to earn some additional income officers from the gra visited israel's pharmacy and raised a tax assessment israel confronted the tax officers and asked them to read the income tax act where he's supposed to be exempt from income tax as a cocoa farm is israel's claim valid explain your answer so you can press pause once again and then have a go at this so okay the issue here is interesting israel's claim is not valid and i'll tell you why you know israel probably thinks he's a cocoa farmer so all his income is exempt from income tax remember what the law said was is the income from cocoa of a cocoa farmer so yes you are a cocoa farmer yes you won national best farmer at your regional level but your pharmacy is a separate business it has nothing to do with the cocoa farming business or the cocoa farming operations so we'll tax your pharmacy as though we didn't even know you were a cocoa farmer so israel's claim is not valid and the reason is because the exemption only covers the income of a cocoa farmer from cocoa farming and not any other business right take notes very important the next concept checker is required says is johan liable to tax on the gains made on his portfolio of shares explain your answer so the question here is johan blake is a stockbroker with an authorized dealing officer certification issued by the ghana stock exchange johan holds a portfolio of shares on the New York Stock Exchange and has made significant gains due to the recent share price appreciation of Tesla shares. Is Johan liable to income tax on the gains he made on his shares? Explain your answer. Have a go. Press pause. Try. So, okay. The answer is yes. Johan is liable to tax on the gain. Don't forget that the exemption for gains on the stock exchange is securities or shares traded on the ghana stock exchange if you read the question well we are saying johan holds a portfolio of shares on the new york stock exchange so the us will tax johan because he made a gain in their territory it has nothing to do with ghana so johan is liable to tax on the gains but in usa right the next one is the income of an institution or trust of a public character established by an enactment solely for the purpose of environmental research is exempt from tax true or false give this a try and let's see how you do it's false why the trick word here is environmental research what the law exempts is scientific research not environmental research so this is false the answer should be scientific research uh final concept checker is required what will be your response when it is your turn to speak so the question says you have been invited to a radio talk show on taxation in ghana the topic for discussion is the taxation of members of the executive arm of government one panelist mentioned that the vice president of ghana is exempt from income tax but only on his salary as vice president what will be your response when it's your turn to speak you can pause and think through this let me know what you think you can type your answers in the comments if you want so here the answer is when it's my turn to speak i'll just say the vice president is not exempt from income tax at all it is only the president of ghana who enjoys income tax salaries pensions gratuities and facilities right the vice president is fully taxable fully liable to income tax he's not covered anywhere in the law so when it's my turn to speak i told the panelists that it's just a president and the vice is not covered let's quickly summarize what we have done remember 
they take away a point into section 7 of the income tax act is what covers amounts that are exempt from income tax there are a number of exemptions available under the income tax act which we've gone through and then we are seeing through the concept checkers that it's important to focus on the specific wording of the exemptions to determine the exact scope of application and before i, I end I have seen a number of exam questions from both the ICA Ghana and CIT Ghana where they ask students to actually state specific conditions attached to some of the exemptions. So uh, depending on the exam you are writing, please remember that as much as possible, the ones, the exemptions that come with conditions, probably the ones that say things like where the person is a resident of this country, where it is paid out of consolidated fund, those conditions, please remember them because examiners like to pick on questions like that to see if you can recall this area so hopefully this has been helpful if it has don't forget to smash the like button and i will see you in the next session